All right, Sean, we looked at Rory's driver swing and what makes him one of the best drivers on the planet and, and what we can steal from that, right? There's a lot of things these guys do that we can't do, but there are a whole lot of things they do that we can learn from and incorporate in our swings. Now let's take a look at doing the same thing with one of the more underrated aspects of Rory's game. That's his iron swing. Mm, absolutely. We can take from this some key differences from the driver, mm -hmm. um, but things that, like Mike said, you can absolutely add into your game, especially if you have some misconceptions about what you're supposed to do with the body. Right. If you've been told to cover the ball, you've been told to stay behind the ball with all your shots, this is going to help you figure out how to compress your irons and hit the ball a little more solid, a lot like you see with more Rory McIlroy and some of these better iron players. That's exactly right. Sean, when we came out with the Weight and Pressure Master Series, uh, we did that because a lot of golfers are confused about where to put the upper body, the lower body, the head, all of those things throughout the golf swing, right? There's a real big fear of letting those things drift too far forward or even letting them move off the golf ball. And it's one of the things that we really address in that series, and we'll put a link down below in the description so you can really see the nuts and bolts of what great players do in the golf swing. And that's really what we want to focus on in this video today with regards to Rory. It's one of the things that we can all learn from when we want to hit our irons, not only more pure, more solid, but have that nice high ball flight that you can get to pins that you can't afford to be bouncing and releasing 15 yards for, right? When you got a tuck pin, you want to have that ball coming in nice, high, and soft. And most of you have never really truly felt a compressed golf ball. Right. Where the club head comes in with a little shaftling that everybody is dying to get, right. squeezes the ball into the turf off the sweet spot. Nothing really feels better than that. We want you to have that feeling so yeah. you keep coming back and playing more We golf. see so many guys trying to get it, but they're just trying, they're going about it in a way that almost guarantees you won't get it. And it's so manufactured, you know, guys are trying to shove their hands forward as right. hard as they can right beating down on it trying to take a right. divot we're going to try to show you here you know what what Rory does compared to the amateur golfer right and how you can add that in right so you're going to see if you've watched the driver video that we did on him you're going to see mm -hmm. some very similar things that he does with his irons right mm -hmm. and that's what what happens with great players you don't see drastically different swings with their irons and driver there's some key differences some subtle differences yes yes they're key they're subtle and they're usually biased, really good drivers, good iron players, or really great iron players, good drivers. It's mm -hmm. rare that you're gonna see one golfer just be exceptional at both, mm -hmm. right? Rory's one of those cases where he's one of the best ball strikers overall. on the planet overall. Yeah. And we're gonna show you how similar what he does with his driver kind of correlates to what he does with his iron. So let's have you set up. Mm -hmm. So I've got six iron here, I've got the ball uh, just a little bit left to center. Yep. Rory likes to hit a draw. I know a lot of you would like to hit a draw, yep. so don't put it too far forward. Right. Just left to center a little bit. The it's shoulder it's more stance. under the where a shirt logo would go than yeah. it is way back on the back side. Exactly right. All right, so we saw in the driver swing that he had a move off the ball. It was about two, two and a half inches off the ball. Yes, yeah, so w let's, let's talk about the upper center of my rib cage Correct. for a second. I'm gonna drop a line out of it just so you can see where that would trace on the ground. Right, and this is a good, we, we, we do this in gears and there's a line that comes out in gears and you can actually mimic this, closely mimic it yeah. with your own swing by using a golf club. Just like hold this. it lightly so it moves with you. Don't don't attach it to your spine right. so the tilt's affected. We're looking at lateral motion. We want kind of a plumb bob. Yeah, plumb bob, exactly. So you know what you're gonna see, move slightly to the right and he maxes out that lateral right about here. He maxes it out with the club kind of this 45 degrees to the ground. So he's not doing maxing the right at the top of the swing. No, like, way, you, like most people think. Before the takeaway is complete. Exactly. So a little bit of lateral here with my plumb bob. You can see it on the ground. As he goes into the top, he gets some of this recentering, right? Mm -hmm. You yep. can see this club start to recenter. Now, here's the spot where the amateurs and Rory start to differ, this next move, right? Yep. So Mike, talk me through how far forward he goes here. So let's, let's rewind that for a second. Yeah. So I, I think this kind of, this is a point worth kind of uh, harping on a little bit. It's laterally speaking, his backswing ends right here and he's starting to, to move forward laterally speaking. He's still rotating clothes laterally speaking, from here to the top. Yeah. Right, he's using this whole window of time to kind of let himself drift To gather back himself. Over, to gather himself. It's not a all to the right and then a big violent eruption to the left, right? He's using this window of time to do that. Now, going back to your point, mm -hmm. back to the top. 
So he's Jeez. about two inches to the right, here. way down here, over to four inches forward with both the upper and lower body. Right here. Right there, just a little bit earlier than that, actually. Yeah, he's, Right in there. He's four inches forward of where he started. Where he started. With the center of his chest and the center of his and hips. Center. So he's not doing, you know, this. He's moving them both forward, and that's called covering the golf ball. And I was taught as a kid, you know, like, Mike, put your hand here. I hit a lot of golf balls trying to right. stay way back. You know, his head would, and the upper body would crash through that a little bit. Exactly right. So that allows him to get situated to a spot to when he does start to push off and use the ground, his head, his upper body kicks back a little, but it's still two and a half inches in front of where he started. Right, so he goes two inches away from right here all the way to about right here. Four inches four forward. Four inches forward, so that's six inches of lateral movement. With, right, two inches left, six inches forward. Yeah. With now, both. Now the hips are going to continue forward a little bit as yep. he stretches out. His upper body kicks back, but the center of his chest is still two and a half inches in front of the ball. And to well, me, it's in front of where it started. Where it started, sorry. That's where, why the ball position for these guys is always forward of center. That's right. So it's two and a half inches in front of where he started so that that becomes basically the low point. Right. Right. So he can squeeze the ball first, take his divot, and move through. That way, when he do, if he were to keep too centered with his upper when he starts down and not move forward, when he finally did push, he basically hit it fast. That's exactly right. And that's right. what a lot of you are dealing with. That's exactly right. And it, angle of attack actually can shallow out better from there. Yes. Because you're on top of the ball and you're pushing up, mm -hmm. and it's pulling this club up and shallowing. So you get the ball flight that you want. You get that crisp, solid lean that everybody wants. You get all these things, but he's doing it the opposite way most golfers perceive it. He's not staying back behind the ball. One, because he doesn't have the ball in the middle of his stance. So if I had the ball in the middle of my stance and I wanted to stay behind it, yeah, I'd have to move behind it. Yeah. So they all have this ball up forward, so they're already setting up behind it. So they have the freedom to move up here on it. And then right down at the bottom, it tilts to where he's two and a half inches in front of where he started. The hips are about five inches in front of where they started. And you get that that tour like smash. And, and we've mentioned this in other videos. You know, if, I think where golfers have gotten off track. If you look at a still shot of address, and a still shot of impact, it, it looks like your head is just and your body just kind of was frozen and just turned. Right, right. It doesn't. There's some right. There's some middle. There's some forward. And then when you finally push, the well, upper body kicks back just a little bit. You're still on top, and that gives you that motion where you can really start using the ground. Right. So you know. Look at his swing next time he plays. You're going to see these see movements. And, and these guys are so good at timing the movements well that it just has such a flow to it. it it's has not a, a flow. big, violent, you it know, jerky motion to it. It looks almost effortless, but yeah. it's not effortless. But because it's smooth, it's fast. That's right. That's right. Smooth is fast. So let's come back with some drills and really kind of help you guys feel this and be able to do it. All right, so the drill we want to show you guys today is really going to be predicated on a couple of things. One is going to require you to be disciplined to do it, yeah. right? When we start doing impact kind of focused drills, the tendency is for golfers to want to go fast because they want to see the instant results, the ball going far. And what you wind up doing is trying to put a good move on top of speed, mm -hmm. right? Almost impossible to do. We want to put speed on top of a good move, right? You with me? Yes, I, say it. <laughs> I think I'm getting that right. I think I'm getting that. What he's saying is, if you have, if you have a poor move, you can't put speed on it. <laughs> it's hard to do. You just what you're wind up going to do, or what you're going to wind up doing, is making your normal move. Yeah, he's just going to make the same old move you right. always do. So we making. want you to slow down, develop the good move, and then speed comes super easy on top of a good move. Now I got it. Perfect. We, we took a long ways to explain a simple concept. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> this is an impact drill. A lot of this is predicated that you have a, you know, you have a shaft in a good spot coming down. Right. right? And you've worked on, worked your way through the swing. And, and if you're a member of AMG All Access, you know we have kind of a step-by-step -step program there, and that's the way we like to exactly. do things. But let's say you've got all that ironed out, and you want to figure out how to get these irons hit more solid and compressed. This is a perfect drill for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So I'm going to set up to the ball here. Just do it straight on. Okay. We're just going to hit it uh, 20 feet or so. Ball position, forward of center, like Mike yep, said, so yep. you can go up there and get it. Start at address, basically straight up and down. Your right yep. shoulder be a little bit lower. And then I want you to move the center of your hips and shoulder, uh, pelvis and rib cage or upper body three or four inches forward, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's not where you're going to be at impact, but there's a reason I'm doing and you this. You can use an alignment stick here. Go back to the address. Yeah. You can put alignment stick down just to give you the confirmation of what three or four inches feels like. Yeah, so 
Now, you're not going to be there at impact that far forward, but there's a reason right. I'm doing this. We're going to preset it forward. I'm going to have you make a little swing back, and then when you finally push off with your left side, it's going to kick you back just enough, just like you, you see the best players You want that dynamic do. extension of the lead side to give you tilt. That's you right. don't want to come in trying to tilt, because then if you push off, you're going to tilt even farther. Right, and then you're bringing in all this nice turf behind the ball yeah, into play. Mike and I, we've seen this drill before, but we came up with doing it this way where you put things a little more forward, yeah. especially with the chest, because we realize that we want that dynamic tilt to happen, and you have to set up with this particular drill more forward than normal for that to happen when you make the little right. chip swing. Right. So we, we think this is a better way to do it. So let's go ahead and try it. I'm standing right over there. I'm going to chip one out there as long as I don't hit that guy on the driving range. So quite a bit more, a little bit more forward than normal. Yep. Little back swing, and I'm gonna straighten out and try to shallow it out. My upper body kicked back just a little bit, yep. and I tucked my rear end under. And when I did that, my arms were straight. Right? right. This is gonna do a number of things for you guys. It's gonna teach you this kind of split second move that all these great players have. You're gonna be able to feel how the body is correlating with the club movements, and then it's gonna give you this extension through the shot. We see a lot of guys kind of we call it bird dogging. Yeah. Right, so you're not going to be able to hit the ball solidly if you're bird dog. And that's like this move through the ball where you got the upper body out here in front. That makes a great point. You know, you, I want you to, um, to analyze your finish position here. So what should happen when you're finished is you should feel stretched out in your stomach mm -hmm. and chest, your chest to the sky a little, and your arms should be resting on your chest. What a lot of you do, you say, oh, I'm, I'm not extended. So you'll try to do this. Right. Well, the problem wasn't your arms. The problem was you didn't learn how to extend through the ball exactly with your right. body. So that's the reason the arms get straight. So as you do this, try it without a ball at first. Forward, back a little, extend the body. The arms are going to feel down on the body as your body gets the club out of the ground. And you can try to hit your little divot in the ground. Just thump the ground a little bit until you can start feeling that at a ball. Some and you're going to start hitting the ball rather middle of Some face. of you guys are going to see divots way out in front of the ball for the first time. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's the shallowing part. That club's actually contacting the ball, still on its way down, not on its way up. Exactly right? right. So give this drill a try. Do it slow. Do it no faster than what you saw Sean you hit do. the ball 20 feet. Right, right. This isn't a 180-yard pitch drill, right? Mm -mm, no. So make yourself go slow. Make yourself go meticulously clean. We want clean movements here so you can feel these differences. Give it a try. Let us know how it goes. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and give us a like. Give us a thumbs up. Also, if you have a question about the video or there's a topic you want us to cover in a future video, leave it down in the comments below. We read every single comment and we respond to them and that's how we create new content for you in the future. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button so you know exactly when one of our new videos comes out. If you want more compression on your iron shots, more tour quality solid iron shots every time you go out to play, we created a free video just for you. In the pinned comment below, you're going to find a link. Click on the link, you're going to be taken to another page, you're going to enter your name and your email address. Once you do that, you're going to be taken instantly to the free video training where you're going to learn our number one go-to drill to get more compression on your iron shots, which is going to allow you to hit more greens and have more fun playing the game.